to color or not to color? That is the question. And the answer to that question is, welcome back to the channel, everyone. My name is Wade Thomas, the owner of Black Type Iron Candle Company and the creator of this YouTube channel. If you are interested in learning more about candle making, including this business side of things, feel free to subscribe. Please hit the like button below. And if you subscribe, also hit the bell notification so you are notified whenever I post new videos. I will have resources and links in the description of this video to other resources that might help you as a candle maker, as well as some of the links to my social channels if you are interested in following. With all that being said, let's get back into today's topic, which is all about color and whether or not you want to color or should color your candles. So as I said at the beginning of this video, to color or not to color? The answer to that question for me is yes. Yes to both. Uh, and let me explain that a little bit. Every candle maker generally makes the majority of their candles in either colored candles or non-colored candles, non-dyed colors. In other words, they just go with the natural state or the natural color of their wax that they are using. And because there are variations in waxes, sometimes that natural color could be a very bright white, but usually it's kind of an ivory color. But either way, candle makers do have the option to leaving it in that natural state or to go ahead and use dyes that are made for candles to give their candles some color. And the question that many candle makers have is which one is right? Which one should they do? Uh, which route should they go? And for you as a candle maker, that really is a preference. This is one of those things in candle making that it's not really so much is there a right or wrong? It's more of a preference. What do you want to do? Now, for me personally, the reason that I answer yes to that question is because I offer both. And the reason I offer both is that there is a market for both. So in my experience, and at least in my history of all my sales, my colored candles sell anywhere, depending on the season and the, and the jar size, sell anywhere between four to one and seven to one over my non-colored candles. Now you hear that and you might be thinking, well, if that's the case, why do I sell non-colored candles at all? Why sell any natural colored candles if my colored candles are making much more money overall or at least have many more sales? Well, the reason is, is yes, my dyed candles or colored candles do sell overall more, but I also have customers that only buy non-colored candles. And I'm sure that is the case with a lot of candle makers out there. I would say most candle makers starting these days do not dye their candles. And that's for a couple reasons. One is it's significantly easier. It's one less thing not to have to worry about if you don't dye your candles. You don't have to worry about the mess. You don't have to worry about whether or not it affects the candle burn or the wicking in any way. Um, it's just one less thing to have to worry about. And that's always a positive when you're running a business or doing any kind of craft if it makes your job a little easier. That being said, a lot of the other reason that many candle makers don't use dye is because a lot of customers just prefer the natural color of the wax. And for that reason, I offer both. I tend to offer products that I think appeal to uh, not just the majority, but I want to try to reach the biggest market I can. Now, when I say that, take that with a grain of salt. I do not mean try to spread yourself so thin that you're trying to appease everyone. But when it comes to colored and not colored, it's really just a simple change of, of a product for me. So most of my candles I will offer in dyed or non-dyed. Now again, the majority of them do sell as colored candles, especially around certain seasons and for specific events or reasons, but I do sell quite a bit of natural colored candles as well. The other reason I offer natural colored candles is in jars that are opaque and are colored. So if they're not clear glass jars, for example, I sell white tumblers now, I do dye some of those as well, but I also sell black tumblers and, or tens, and you don't see the wax in that unless you have the lid off, but as it's burning, you generally don't see the wax. So in that case, there's really no reason to have to dial, to dye the candle, but a lot of customers just prefer that natural look. So if it's not too much effort to take away dye, then there's not really a big reason for me not to go ahead and offer both. So that's a long-winded answer or explanation of why I offer both. Yes, I sell more colored candles, but I would lose a lot of sales if I also didn't sell non-colored or natural looking candles. So hopefully that addresses the reasons of why I offer both, but ultimately the choice is up to you if you want to offer one or the other or both. If you are going to dye your candle, what type of dye should you be using? There are really two main types of candle dyes out there. One of them is liquid dye. I've got a couple examples here. This is from Candle Science. 
This is a golden honey, golden honey liquid diet. You can see it comes with a dropper, um, and they sell this in one ounces, four ounces, um, and uh, really depending on where you get where, what supplier you're using, you can get them in various sizes. Another example here is from a Cajun Candle Supply Company. Um, I've got some of these as well. This is a, just a simple blue. This one comes with the dropper as part of the lid, which I thought was going to be really handy and convenient, but I realized it was causing more of a mess than the separate dropper. So they're still, still great dyes, but most of my candles are made with candle science dyes. For the, the biggest reason for that is just because I've always used them, and so they, they've always worked for me, and I don't really have a reason to change. Um, the other type of candle dye... Uh, which is a little less common is the dyed chips. Now here's a sample pack and you can see how often I use these because this is brand new. Um, and inside this is a bunch of little packs. And inside the little pack, let me get one of these out here, are little chips like this. Now some of them come in big blocks, some of them come in little smaller blocks like this. Again, this is a sample pack. And the way you use these is you just measure or shave off what you need. Um, and yes, you can weigh them. If you're making larger batches, you can weigh in grams how much you have for consistency uh, per batch. So you might be wondering, which do I prefer? Well, I think I just kind of gave that away. I prefer the liquid dyes for a couple of reasons. Um, one, I tend to find them just easier to use. Yes, they are more messy. That is the biggest con of using liquid dyes is they create a they can create a big mess. Anyone that uses them know what I'm talking about. And the more you try to clean up the mess, the bigger the mess becomes. So wear gloves, latex gloves, something like that. Um, and just try to keep your area as clean as possible because prevention is definitely the key to candle dye messes. But that being said, the dropper allows you to be very, very consistent with the amount of dye you're using in your candle batches. So if you create specific recipes, like most, most of you know that I do, um, I have other videos showing the software that I use to create my recipes and how I track all my manufacturers. And creating those very specific recipes is much easier to do when you're using a dropper because you can measure the amount of drops per eight ounces or per pound or per batch or however you want to do it. It's very easy to do that with a dropper. On the other hand, with, uh, with the dye chips, that's much more difficult to do. Uh, it's hard to be as accurate. However, if you are to the point where you've scaled up large enough and you're making large batches, then shaving them and measuring them by grams is arguably just as, if not more, accurate than using the dropper. Both of them can do the job 100%, but I would suggest for most new candle makers, I would recommend the liquid dyes. They're just easier to use and more consistent. What I will say to anyone using the candle liquid dyes is you will notice that they're very concentrated. So if you ever kind of give a whiff of them, you might think, man, this is very chemically smelling. Is this going to affect the burn of the candle or the scent of the candle? Well, we're going to talk about how it affects, how it could potentially affect burning or wicking later in the video. But as far as the smell, unless you are really oversaturating your wax with the dye, that chemical smell that you're smelling in the bottle is not going to be noticeable in the finished product. It is a very concentrated dye in the bottle, but again, you're using a small amount overall to the rest of the candle materials, including the wax and the oils and so on, it becomes negligible, something you just don't notice. But since we are on the topic of oversaturating, how much candle dye should you use? I can't speak to that too much on the dyed chips. I would just follow whatever the uh, manufacturer or supplier recommendations are. But in terms of candle liquid dye, the general rule of thumb that you see out there a lot is uh, 10 drops per pound or less. Now, I will say it kind of depends on the liquid dye itself. I've used, I mostly am definitely under that, that 10 drops per pound. I would say I'm mostly in the probably 4 to 8 drops per pound range if I had to average out my recipes. But there are a few recipes that I actually use a little bit more than 10 uh, just because it's harder to get that rich color without doing that. If you do that, just make sure you thoroughly test your candle to make sure it doesn't impact the candle. If it doesn't, you're fine. But the reason that general suggestion is out there is just to prevent you from oversaturating and using too much dye, which can cause wick clogging and things like that. Again, we'll touch on that in a few minutes. So those are the different types of candle dyes. What I do want to mention real quick before we move on is these are the type of dyes you should be using for candle making. What you do not want to use in candle making is crayons or any kind of soap or food coloring. Those are water-based. They are not meant to be used in candles. In fact, you don't want to use anything in candle making that is water-based. So just keep that in mind. Use candle dyes for candles. 
use soap dyes for soap. They are very different and they are not interchangeable. So just always keep that in mind. So the next thing I wanna talk about quickly is how do you come up with colors? And how do you test for color accuracy? Well, as far as coming up with colors, that's kind of the fun part of using dye with your candles is you get to experiment. It's just another thing to have fun with. You can come up with any colors you want. Don't feel locked in. You can use the colors that are provided out of bottle or you can mix and match them and come up with own unique colors. For example, I have several different shades of blues and oranges and reds across all of my candles, and that's just having fun and experimenting until I come up with something I like. If you are not very familiar with mixing colors, something that uh, you've never really done, then uh, what I would recommend is picking up one of these color wheels. Now, you can get these from a few different candle suppliers. Honestly, I don't know where I got this. I've had it for so long. Just Google uh, color wheels or candle dye color wheels, something like that and you should find them. If I do find a link to them, I will drop it in the description to make it easier for you. But what's nice about these, and they've got two sides to them, and uh, what I like is you can use one as the base, and then you can spin around the other side and see that if you add different colors to it, most of them we all know that you, know, you mix blue and yellow, you get green, but you can get more granular than that because on the other side, you can do different shades as well. And so again, if this says something new to you and you're just uncomfortable with, I don't know what colors I wanna mix together, these cost next to nothing. Pick one up, have a little fun, just experiment, write down some options as you're doing it based off of the scent you're going to be working with and just see what you come up with. It's, it's just a lot of fun. It's, it kind of adds a little more creativity to the candle making process if you're using dye. So, uh, so yeah, these can be helpful if it's very new to you. As far as testing the colors as you are making candles, what I like to do is make sure you're adding your candle dyes probably first to your hot wax uh, once you start working on a batch. Uh, that way it gives you more time to kind of continue to add drops and continue to check the color before your wax cools down too quickly. You do want to add your candle dye um, at the hottest point possible. It just lets it mix in and, and bind a little bit better to the wax. And then you have a couple options. Paper plates are a great option. I mentioned this in a few videos, but just good old white paper plates. You can just take uh, after you're mixing your color, you can just you know, drop a few drops on the paper plate, it dries super quick. You can get a relatively good idea of what that color is going to look like. It will be different based off of the actual wax you're using. Some waxes are more uh, shiny and, tra and translucent. Some are more opaque and dense. Um, some are naturally bright white. Others are naturally kind of an ivory color. So all of that is gonna affect the color a little bit, but just dropping a few drops on the plate should give you a pretty good indication of, of the overall hue of the color. And then you can just continue to add more drops of different colors or more drops of the same color, and then keep doing that until you find what you like. I like to do candle color testing while I'm also doing my normal candle wick testing because I can kind of kill two birds with one stone. While I'm pouring some tester candles, it's a great opportunity to also test using the colors and uh, until I find something that I like. If you don't have paper plates handy, you can just kind of hold, if you're using like a, a white, wood, uh, white mixing spoon, in your pouring pitcher, then you can check it on there and get a decent idea. All you're doing is trying to get a decent idea of what the color is gonna look like. So are you looking for kind of a light or pastel color? Or are you looking for more of a rich, vibrant color? The reason I bring this up is there are a couple ways to achieve each, but part of it's gonna depend on the wax you're using. So let's start with kind of a light or pastel color. If you're looking for that type of color range, you're gonna be better off with soy waxes because they just typically aren't as rich with color as something like paraffin. Um, so if you're using soy, and you want a light color, just add a couple drops, and just test it out, but you shouldn't have an issue with light or kind of pastelish looking colors. If you're looking for more of a rich color in soy, I'll give you a couple tips on that next, but you're generally gonna to need to add more, uh, more dye. But on the flip side, if you're looking for that more rich and vibrant candle color, then paraffin is gonna be a better choice for the wax just because naturally uh, it's going to show more rich, vibrant colors. It holds color better than soy, but even with soy, you can get great colors. One thing you can do is just to use more dye. And then the other trick is using Vibar. If your soy wax doesn't already have Vibar in it, which is important, you don't want to add Vibar if it already has it. But if it doesn't, adding a little bit of Vibar, what Vibar you use is going to depend on the melt point of your wax. I have a video, I'll link it up above, on using Vibar. Check that out before you just buy Vibar because there are a couple different types to use and you need to get the right one. Um, also, that video will show you how much to use. But what Vibar does, or one of the benefits of Vibar, it does several things, but one of the effects of Vibar is even color distribution. Not only does it spread the color more evenly throughout the wax, but also make the colors a little more rich. So if you're using soy and you're struggling getting the colors you want, or at least as rich as you want them, 
try adding a little bit of Vibar, and that might actually help with the vibrance. The next to last thing I want to talk about yeah, real quick is whether or not using dye will affect wicking. Now this is important, and I have other videos that talk about wicking. In fact, I have another video called All About Wicks, and I even mentioned color and several other factors that need to be considered when you're doing wicking. Again, I'll link that up above and in the description below, but check out the video. It's a long one, but it's very detailed. With that being said, the simple answer to this question is maybe. Most of the time, candle dye will not generally affect wicking your candle, at least in any type of amount that will cause you to have to change wicks. That being said, anyone looking for those vibrant colors like dark browns, dark reds, and, dark, and, and black, that can be really difficult to do without adding a lot of color. And at that point, it's really imperative to test your candles again to make sure they still perform. Because adding that much dye can clog the wick, or at least make it not burn as efficiently as it would with less dye or no dye. So the short, short answer is, yes, dye can affect wicking, most of the time you're okay, but it's always important to check because you might test and think you have a perfect wick. Then you go and add 20 drops of red and you realize when you go to do your test burn that the wick is having a hard time staying lit and it's drowning out or it's mushrooming more than normal. So for several reasons, just make sure you're double checking to test your candle if you're using dye. Now we're all testing our candles anyways, but it's, it's just important to remember that if you introduce candle dye and you currently don't use candle dye, that you should go ahead and retest just to make sure that your wick and sizing is still correct. And lastly, where do you get candle dye? Well, most of us already know several candle suppliers. We work with them already. I will list some of the popular or common ones down in the description below. But most places that sell candle supplies will also sell candle dye. Are certain ones better than others? That's kind of for you to decide. Uh, like I said, I've used Candle Science and always had good luck with them. I know several people that have used Cajun Candle, Flaming Candle, and never had any problems with those. There are so many good candle suppliers out there. If your candle dye that you're purchasing is coming from a reputable supplier, then I would assume that you're gonna be good to go and I wouldn't worry about it too much. If you are buying your candle dye from maybe just Amazon or from a supplier that you don't know much about, um, then you may definitely wanna test them and make sure you're happy with them before you buy too much. Um, because again, there are several options out there for candle dye. They're generally not too expensive. Uh, because they last you so long and they're also pretty cheap, uh, cheap to ship. So make sure you find the candle dyes that you like working with and stick with those. But again, there are several suppliers out there. I will leave some options in the description below. Anyways, I hope everyone enjoyed this video. Uh, it, it's This wasn't something I had planned on doing a video on quite yet, but I'd had several people reach out and ask me about colored candles because on my website, most of my candles that you see in the displays are dyed candles, uh, but several of you know that I offer both. And so I just wanted to explain a little bit about that. I've had questions about why I do both and which I recommend. And again, just to recap, I can't really recommend one way or the other. I like both. And I would just say it's really up to you. It's your preference. But for all the reasons and the things we talked about above, I would I would say consider giving it a shot if you're interested in using can uh, colors. It does make the process a little bit messier and sometimes a little harder, but it's also more fun in my opinion. And it really gives you a lot more variety in your candle line. So again, just think that through. And if, this, uh, if, if using candle dyes is something you are considering. Hopefully this video helped you out. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.